Um, and I remember him talking to me about the nature of grieving and the nature of passing then. Mm -hmm. And he, I said, could, Your Royal Highness, could you perhaps give me an, an ind indication of your own suffering? And that's when he told me about the passing of his sister. I know the royal family has been, you know, doing what they can in supporting of Ukraine. I know Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, they recently donated to a bunch of uh, support organizations. Um, the Queen and Prince William and Prince Charles have also spoken out. But what do you make of Prince Harry deciding to opt out of going to the memorial? And does that send shockwaves through the royal family? Are the, or was that almost expected? Well, as a result of this culture of uncertainty, I believe that the security forces have advised him not to attend, mm -hmm. purely and simply because the level of um, disruption that has been created within the collective psyche as a result of the disturbance within the household, mm -hmm. the, um, the, the exit point of Harry and Meghan, the establishment of their lives in California, the way that the British press are not uh, positive about the whole establishment of their lives in California, that there are these um, small tremors moving through the collective psyche. And so I believe it's largely to do with the security officials and that Harry is actually really down about not being able to attend this remarkable day in celebration of his grandfather, for whom he has tremendous love. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they. Uh, I mean, they were extremely close. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, largely as a result of the, the un, unbelievable, almost unconscionable drama of 25 years ago, because again, in, in uh, August, we're celebrating the 25th anniversary of Diana's passing. And Prince Philip really stepped in as a surrogate father and protected both of them. You know, he was very evoked at that time by something that he experienced at the same age as the two boys. In fact, I think, you know, William was 13 and I think Prince Philip was 13 when his sister, his favoured sister, also perished in a terrible aeroplane accident. Mm -hmm. And that shocked him unbelievably because she had taken over the role of surrogate mother. Mm -hmm. So, you know, emotionally, I remember, you know, I was brought up in, in not absolutely in the very close privy nature of the family, but as a sort of satellite. And I remember spending time as a child with Philip. Um, he, my father died very young. My father worked with him for 33 years mm -hmm. and my father died very young. In fact, shooting with, with His Royal Highness in Scotland. And so Prince Philip took over the role of surrogate father for about 10 years for myself. And so that meant that I would go and see him for tea, um, you know, once a month or once a quarter. Um, and he would check up on the young Stuart. What is he doing? Um, because this was in the, the, the 70s. My father died in 1976. Um, and I remember him talking to me about the nature of grieving and the nature of passing then. Mm -hmm. And he, I said, could, Your Royal Highness, could you perhaps give me an, an ind indication of your own suffering? And that's when he told me about the passing of his sister. So interesting. I had no idea. That's so, that's <laughs> unbelievable. Are you going to be at the memorial? I won't be, no. No, yeah. I won't. Be. I, ha I haven't been invited. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm sure it's like still with COVID and everything going on, it's still like, a, I'm sure, a small a small gathering. But that had to be uh, an unbelievable experience for you. And, you know, getting that close bond with him, that had to be remarkable. Yes. So the two boys, William and Harry, which is really what the context of our mm -hmm. uh, our conversation was, they're, they're really in, in huge favour, in huge allegiance, in huge memory mm -hmm. and honouring yeah. of their their grandfather. Yeah, so I would imagine that, like you said, Harry is probably disappointed that he cannot be in attendance.